Aloha to our beautiful global ohana across YouTube. It has been one year. Hi. Buddy has kept us both very, very busy. Buddy, how old are you? Two. Today, we are going on our first dive trip in forever. We're going to California. We're bringing Buddy with. Hey, Buddy, where are we going? Are we going on the airplane? Yeah. The wonderful Rife Ohana said they'll watch Buddy. They have no idea what they're getting into. And we gotta go to the airport now. So this is my dive bag. We're packing it up. The goal is to get a white sea bass. That's a fish I've never seen before. I've never shot before. I've always dreamed of shooting one. You know, they're kind of elusive. They're kind of a long shot, but let's just go for it. See what happens. I really hope I get one. This whole trip started when my friend Cal called me to tell me that white sea bass are starting to show up in California coastal waters. Cal is hooked on hunting for white sea bass. He hasn't actually shot one yet, but he wants to keep trying and invited me to come with him. And where I go, Buddy goes too. Hey Buddy, what you eating? Pretzels from the plane? Do you know where we are? We're in California. That's right, yeah. Yeah. We're waiting for Mama's friend to come get us. His name is Uncle Cal. Uh, no. Uncle Cal. All right. Going to fly out here in a couple of minutes and go spear fishing for white sea bass. I got my butt kicked fishing for white sea bass last year. I'm expecting to do the same this year. But this year's different because I'm going to meet up with Kimmy Werner. And I figure... Team success is better than no success at all. So why not bring in the big guns? Knife, mask, mask, snorkel. Whatever the proper name for this thing is. Five millimeter wetsuit. Boy, there's some challenges to being landlocked and going on a spear fishing trip. I'm not nervous, I'm just at where I'm at with not diving at all this year. And... What do we find? the best driver in California. Now that we got our crew, we need our gear. So the next morning, we head to Rife International. This company was started by a legendary spear fisherman named Jay Rife in 1979. I've been sponsored by Rife for 12 years now, and my friend Hennaro here has been building guns and working for the company for over 23 years. It feels good to come straight to the source where all of my gear is made and talk to the people who make it themselves. Now that we're geared up, it's time to get out of here and say goodbye to the little monster. While they destroy Rife headquarters, um, this is what I'm choosing to wear for white sea bass hunting and it is a seven mil wetsuit, which means I'm gonna be so buoyant, so floaty. It's a lot to get used to when you're at home in Hawaii using a 1.5 mil or at the most a 3.5 to go seven. It's a big change and you have to wear a lot more weight with it. So it takes some getting used to, but I wanna be warm. We head out in the afternoon, but unfortunately the waters that we're wanting to dive have recently been affected by the red tide. An algae blooms so thick that it discolors coastal waters and depletes the oxygen in them. We're hoping that our dive spots might still be okay and we head out with the one and only Mike Rabe. Mike is a great friend of mine, an excellent spearfisher, a filmmaker, and he knows wild white sea bass probably more intimately than anyone on this planet. He's been working for years now on a documentary about white sea bass and the dedication that he puts in to find these fish, it's unmatched. Uh, par the course for white sea bass. It's usually dirty water and uh, cold. I have never seen a legitimate white sea bass. Oh. The allure of this elusive fish. But unlike Mike's stunning footage, the conditions that we have today are looking pretty grim. It looks like a dark mud puddle. <laughs> To me, being from Hawaii. The white sea bass is way more about time in the water than anything else. And I have more days dedicated to white sea bass than you do. So <laughs> yeah, you definitely. So I, technically, I, I have the advantage. I'm at zero. <laughs> but right when we least expect it, the ghosts show up. There's a white sea bass right there.
vest. Holy shit, I just saw two YC vests. I just swam to my fins. If my gun was loaded, I, oh, well. We all spend the entire afternoon diving into the darkness and searching high and low for these fish. Traveling to a different place and diving foreign waters always comes with a bit of discomfort and anxiety. In order to free dive and hunt, you need to relax. But in order to relax, you need to feel comfortable. So each dive feels like a bit of a struggle to lean deeper into the unknown and turn that anxiety into curiosity. There's clearly some swell today, and the moving kelp can be disorienting in the dark waters. And it's really hard to imagine shooting a fish in conditions like this. But we all dive trying our absolute hardest until the sun is setting and it's time to go. Well, we started this dive where I had my fins in the water, was getting ready to jump in, and this big old white sea bass just came in, parked right under my fins, and then his friend was trailing right behind him, and I can't even believe that, and they're nice fish. Um, of course, I then squealed and spooked them away, and I haven't really seen one since, but we know that they're here. It really does feel like you're trying to find this needle in a haystack, and you are just going up and down, up and down, and you know, majority of times, or in this case for me, all the times, not seeing any of them. And that, I think, can really start to make your motivation switch off. In fly fishing, there's always like the fish at the boat ramp, mm -hmm. and it's like, that can be like the worst thing ever. It's like, oh, that's the one fish of the day. Right. Those images of the fish I saw from the surface will haunt me with the hope I need for the next day as we head home to get some rest and tend to Buddy. The next morning we head out with hearts full of hope only to find out that the conditions have gotten much worse. Are you excited? I am. I am. <laughs> <laughs> I can feel it. Are you excited, Cal? I'm super excited. I'm super excited, but I don't know any better not to be, so. See, what I'm doing wrong right now is I keep imagining those white sea bass that came up to the boat yesterday, and I keep replaying that in my mind of like having a gun, playing it cool, loading one van, and just shooting it in the head from the boat. But that's my problem is that when you're holding on to regret and replaying something you should have done differently, your your hands aren't open to receive. They're on my fin. Rule number one of, spirit, of white sea bass for fishing, you don't splash yourself in the water. My God, what a freaking rookie. <laughs> but the day two hunt is on and we all go hard. But the water is even darker today and the swell came up even more, which makes everything all the more challenging. In some areas, it's dirty on the surface, but once you dive down, you can see. But in some areas, it only gets dirtier the deeper you dive. And on this drop, Cal runs into the bottom without even seeing. Day two ends up being another day of seeing no fish, and we know we have to come up with a better plan. Okay, so now, after diving local and staying in shore and kind of having dirty water and not getting on the fish, we're on a much bigger boat and we're headed to Catalina. Catalina Island is 22 miles off the coast of mainland California. So it holds the promise of cleaner waters and fish that we can hopefully see. The conditions here are beautiful and the visibility is spectacular. We're all filled with new hope as we get to enjoy the magic of hunting the kelp forest. We're seeing different species of fish and reefs that are just brimming with lobsters.
But after diving all day and not seeing a single white sea bass, it does start to eat at me. So far we, I think we've had four days of diving, three days of diving. No fish yet. How many times you pull a trigger? Zero times. But, how's your morale? My morale is actually pretty good. I mean, I'm on a boat in a beautiful island with a group full of friends and getting exercise. I mean, that's a lot of good, right? Can't kill them from the boat. Can't kill him from the boat. I so admire Cal's determination. He did a trip out here last year and did not shoot a single white sea bass, but he's the one that talked me into this trip because all he could think about was trying again. He only recently started spearfishing and he lives in a landlocked state, but the passion and work that he puts into this is incredible. Being a lifelong hunter and choosing to use a traditional bow in archery hunting has taught him patience, perseverance, and has given him a really strong work ethic. It's given him a tolerance for suffering and a resilience that just keeps him coming back for more. And at the end of the day, all of that came together when a nice Gula Bonita swam by Cal, gave him an opportunity, and he executed it perfectly. Bonita are truly an underrated fish, often snobbed for being bloody. But when treated right and eaten fresh, they are absolutely delicious. It's not as big of a fish that uh, I'd intended to go after this trip, but I'm very happy with it. A little uh, prove your worth shot type of thing. Mike, on the other hand, who was diving solo with the camera, did end up getting a glimpse of a white sea bass but there is just nobody else around to shoot it. That evening, we were invited onto Catalina to the home of local diver Juan Aguilar. Juan had shot some fish earlier in the day and invited us to dinner with some friends. Nice. Works quite well. Juan has lived on Catalina Island for over 20 years. 20 years, stuck in paradise. That's amazing. <laughs> this is our third day in a row, and I haven't... Um, Pulled the trigger? No. And tomorrow's the last day. I'm really happy that you and Cal got fish because now we get to eat it. I hope I get a fish. Because then you will. I'll feel like California likes me <laughs> and then I'll definitely come back. Right now I feel like it's like, get out of here, girl. You don't belong. So this is a calico that, that one, one of two calicos that one shot today. I think it's cute that Juan prepared Cal's bonita, Cal prepared Juan's calico, and together we had a great fish dinner. Mm. Eating good fish with great people never fails to make the morale high. And this morning, we're going to need every ounce of last night's positivity because today is our last day of diving. I'm feeling eager to get in there, feeling hopeful but I'm also just feeling like accepting all of these things at once. <laughs> you know, trying to prepare for, for all possible outcomes. Because that's just what you do on your last day of a dive trip. Once again, the conditions are spectacular. And today, I decide to try something different. Since Mike is the one who sees the most white sea bass, I figure I should slow down and shadow him for a change. So I'm following him dive for dive and just mimicking everything he does. Though I do have to keep a healthy distance behind him or to the side of him because I have a loaded spear gun. But on this dive, Mike is waving me in. I am so excited. My lungs are full of air and I feel ready. Mike points, I look, and I see nothing. Apparently the fish he saw slipped behind a kelp stalk right when I looked and then slowly swam away. What? You saw one? Oh yeah. Oh. Mike and I are filled with anticipation as we keep diving together but we never see another white sea bass again.
Meanwhile, Cal and Justin are diving together. And on this dive, as Cal is slowly ascending to the surface, something catches Justin's eye. A huge, giant black sea bass emerges out of nowhere. This is a protected species, but it just goes to show that there are monsters under this kelp, and yet it can be so easy not to see them. But on Cal's last drop of the day, he did see a huge calico, which he was able to shoot and bring back to the boat. As for me, I can't even explain how hard it is for me to get back on the boat knowing that it's over. Kimmy's last one in the water. It's so hard to call it. I just don't want to call it. I just want to keep going. It feels very sad taking my fins off right now, knowing it's like beer 30, which usually I'm really happy about. And time to go home. Cal and I tried our hardest. So did Mike and Justin on the whole white sea bass mission. Thank you. Unfortunately, it didn't line up for us. But in other news, Callahan outdoed me. You got a bonita and I a calico. Out collected. <laughs> so I think out, out dive was a little too generous, my friend, but you said it on camera. So that's, yeah. The cameras don't lie. It only increases the hunger in me. Like, I don't mm -hmm. want to go home. I don't want to give up. Like, that's the painful part for me. It's not like, oh, I'm so bummed. This sucks. Let's get out of here. It's like, no, I'm not ready to go yet. I have something to do here. Yeah. And I didn't do it yet. Everybody stay. So close. Yeah. So yeah, close. it's like, well, I'm in the white sea bass game for a while until, until I collect one or two. I like that about you, Cal. Like, you know. I'm willing to grind. You are. You are. And then you drug me all the way out here and now got me hooked on it. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Cheers to grinding. Cheers. Keep hope alive. Moral of the story. Oh. Dinner tonight is bittersweet to say the least. But there's nothing like some good humor from your friends to help ease the pain. I'm making Brussels sprouts, and my secret ingredient is um, jealousy gotta get used, <laughs> and resentment. Gotta get used to making veggies. I'm really coming on strong on my diving game, and I'm gonna be bringing home the protein more and more. So you had a great run. You had a great run. This is uh, agua chile, chili water. Um, it's very good. Lime, salt, chilies, cucumber, leave the skin on, get it good and green. The secret ingredient is tequila or uh, mezcal. Buddy, do you want to hand this to mama because she didn't get a fish today? <laughs> I gotta admit, Cal's agua chile was damn tasty and made me wish that I pulled trigger on some calicos myself. But more than anything, it's the camaraderie and friendships that I love. And the fact that we get to return to land to our families and celebrate not just the victories, but the hunt itself. So today, before flying home, I want to spend some time with my own family by taking Buddy on his very first Ferris wheel ride. Say thank you, Uncle. Alright guys, have a nice day. Right, cheers. Can I hold your hand? I get crazy. <laughs> oh, <buddy. laughs> oh, but after that, I just couldn't get on a plane. So I got on a boat instead. Back to Catalina. Cause this hunt ain't over yet after all. Well, I was supposed to be going back home to Hawaii and I'm like, nope. I'm going back to Catalina and I'm going diving with Juan. <laughs> Take that, Cal. <laughs> <laughs>